Okay, it starts to be a more and more difficult in deciding which Mac to get, what configuration, which chip. And I'd like to share with you how I believe you should approach this. So right now we have the M4, M4 Pro, M4 Max chip. Probably the M4 Ultra is coming later this year. This is just in general how I would approach the different models of chips together with the different configurations because there are a lot of possibilities here. So this can apply to the M4 the M3, the M8, whenever we get it. And I'd like to share with you which chip you should get with which configuration. With the configuration, I mean which unified memory. Let's start with the base M4 or the base chip. This is just great for everyday simple tasks, web browsing, typing, communication stuff, some marketing, pretty basic things, creating keynotes. You can do some graphic design and video work on that, but I highly recommend you, if you do that a bit more in your work, workflow to go to the Pro model, so to the Pro chip, the M4 Pro or the M5 Pro. These chips are better suited to do graphic intense jobs, a video editing, intense coding. The M4 Pro or the Pro is a better option in that sense. And then the next level is the Max tier or the M4 Max. And this is for the next level of professionals, people who are doing 3D rendering work and video work on the next level, like for example, a footage and multiple layers of that or if you have a lot of data complex data structures that you need to analyze then go for the max model and then the absolute top tier chip is the ultra line so right now we don't have an m4 ultra probably an ultra m4 is coming and this is like for the extreme power user this is also for people that are working in videography and need to work with the highest possible resolution multiple layers of that engineers and data professionals that have to work with countless amounts of data and need to process that 3d rendering artists and graphic designers that really need the absolute best and most powerful speeds then the ultra line is the way to go but it's important to note that the type of chip will also decide the amount of ram or unified memory that you can get and that makes things a little bit more complicated what's good to know now is that the base unified memory that we're getting is 16 gigabytes of RAM and this has to do with Apple intelligence which has to run on a 16 gigabyte unified memory system so that's a great plus plus. and if we look at these different chips so we have the M4 the base model you can get up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory on that one if we go one tier higher as so right now the M4 M4 Pro you can get up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory and then if we go one tier higher we have the m4 max and that one can get up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory and then lastly and this is not confirmed or anything this is not out yet we have the m4 ultra and i believe that will come in at at least 196 gigabytes i assume it will be 256 gigabytes of unified memory looking at the m2 ultra right now but more important for us to know is how much unified memory should you get and and obviously this is related to the chip as I mentioned previously so let's start with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and that is for the base model chip and that's great for if you just do basic task web browsing watching YouTube typing out documents PowerPoint presentations some very basic tasks now the next step is 24 gigabytes of unified memory and still you get this in the base chip and this is just to bump up a little bit that's 16 gigabytes of unified memory this this is useful if you do want to do some video editing, some graphic design, maybe do some light coding, then 24 gigabytes is right for you. Then next up, we're going to the M4 Pro line. If you want to bump up things a bit more, then you'll get the M4 Pro and you can get it with 32 gigabytes of unified memory. And this is uh, if you start to be a bit more serious with video editing, have a lot of browser tabs open, start to do some more graphic intense work. Then for example, the M4 Pro with 32 gigabytes of memory is right for you. And the next level is 64 gigabytes of unified memory and you can get this with the M4 Max. And this is if you wanna take it to the next level. You have to manage some high resolution multitask. So for example, you need Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve open with multiple 4K video layers as well as Photoshop at the same time. You have different browsers open. Also important if you're doing more 3D rendering work than 64 gigabytes 
gigabytes of RAM is recommended to get. And now we come to the significant higher unified memory options. We have 96 gigabytes of unified memory. And this is really for the high end creative professionals and developers, people who need to work with large data sets. If you're editing multiple streams of 8K video footage, for example, 96 is better for you to give you that extra room. Doing more 3D detailed rendering work or need to work with large amounts of coding data, then 96 is the right amount. But if we go to 128 gigabytes, this is where it really comes down to the field that you're working in. If you're really working in specialized domains, for example, film editing, data science, or in a specific engineering job, then you should look at 128 gigabytes of unified memory. This is the right amount for you if you work in extremely large projects that have massive amounts of storage, need to process a lot of tasks at the same time. That can, for example, be the case where you need to work with high res visual effects for cinema, or you need to do advanced scientific research and analysis or create really high demanding software. And lastly, the highest amount that you can get right now, 192 gigabytes of unified memory. And this is like the best of the best only for the like the extreme user. This is vital for people that are, for example, doing which I call mission critical tasks. People who are working with memory intensive applications, working in the AI space with the biggest data sets that you can imagine, or developers that are working in the AI space and need server side development that are extremely complex and data intensive. So yeah, that's my take on which chip to get with which storage option. I know there are so many possible configurations, but I hope this video helped you get more insights, give you the right information in order for you personally to decide which configuration to get. Thanks for being here. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, like this video, and I see you in the next one. Peace.